We have his trainer, his father, the man who two and a half, three, four years ago predicted this, Tapi Lopez Sr. Uh, he's on the stage right now. So again, the raise hand button in the Zoom chat. Um, and we got some questions from the audience, I am sure as well. So please get in the queue. And our first question comes from Sam Gordon with the Review Journal. First and foremost, congratulations on the victory. What um, tactically did you see? What vulnerabilities did you see in Lomachenko tonight that you guys were able to exploit going into the fight? Uh, from the beginning, I had told him, um, you know, keep your composure. Uh, you know, hit, don't get hit. You know, um, we, we got this thing that we call the pyramid. And um, basically, you know, it's like uh, it goes like into an angle where you could touch the fighter, the fighter can touch you. Uh, when I seen Lomacheco having a hard time with that, I, I knew that we was going to win this fight, you know. Right away, I found out, you know, I got to give a lot of respect to Lomacheco for taking those big shots, you know, early on into the fight. And, um, and you know, he wanted to win. He just couldn't figure it out my son. My son was a better man today. We, we did something that everybody thought we couldn't do. We outboxed him, you know. We gave him a clinic, you know. And um, I'm just so glad, man, that um, everything that I said, you know, came into his system. Keith Eidick, you're next. Congratulations on the big win. Um, Thank you. Welcome. Uh, Lomachenko came back a little bit in the second half of the fight. He mounted a, a comeback, and he, he was much more aggressive in the second half. Was there any concern on your part that he was winning rounds at that point, or did you feel heading down the stretch that you were ahead? Well, I really didn't see him winning any rounds because, um, it, to me, uh, my son was hitting with the biggest shots, you know, um, he was, he was playing dirty in there. He was trying to headbutt him. He headbutted him a lot of times in his eyes. And I was, uh, I was telling him, listen, man, you don't let this guy keep on going because he's going to end up cutting you. You know, I told him that like around the, the eighth round and it, and it came, it came to happen, you know? Uh, but, um, yeah, he, he, he got desperate because he knew that, that he could only win by knockout. Did you tell your son to, uh, for lack of better words, fight dirty back because it seemed like Lomachenko was hitting him on the break and headbutting him and everything. Did you tell him to kind of give it back to him a little bit or what did you, how did you go? No, back? I just told him that he had to be tougher, you know, try to keep away from him, you know, stay composed, move around, you know, cause he's a great boxer, you know, um, his whole 170 amateur fights was boxing, you know, and uh, we needed that today. Um, we, we show the world that my son is not only a puncher, like I said before, you know, we just, we just made the best boxer in the world look like nothing, you know? So we're here to stay for a long time. This kid's only 23. We're making history, man. He's the first one to win four belts at the 135 pound division and the first one to unify so young. Thank you, Keith. Uh, next, we go to Kevin Ioli from Yahoo. Kevin, please go ahead. Uh, Tefimo, just curious. Uh in the early part of the fight, uh, Vasily wasn't even throwing any punches at all. Do you think that was because of what was coming at him and that he couldn't fire back because the power was too much for him? No, it was because of the pyramid, like I said. You know, we, we could hit you, but you can't hit us. And if you try to get in, you're going to pay for it. So he couldn't understand that, that, that style. And, and it was too late when he, you know, tried to, tried to figure it out. Then he just, he just went for broke. That's what I saw in him. You know, he said, you know, what the hell? I'm, I, I don't want to lose, so... That's why he started going crazy, going, going inside with his head under, you know, hitting my son with those shots to the head with, uh, with his head. And, and, you know, he was just trying to, to make the fight dirty, you know. But my son stood composed and I got it. That's what true champions do, you know. And, and it was an amazing fight. I knew that once we adapted to him, the fight was over. And I know this isn't your call, but I'm just curious what you think. Uh, where do you want to see Tefimo go next? You know, do you want to see him try to reel off some runs of defenses in this division, or do you think you know that there's other titles? You know, he's a big kid that maybe you know have him move up and at some point and, and chase another championship. Yeah, you know, he's 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 been. Um, if it wasn't for these people that are helping us now, you know, perfecting athletes, I don't think he would have been able to make the weight so comfortably. Um, I think it's time to move up. I think it's time for him to um, go and try to get all the belts at the 140 pound division. There's no, there's no reason why we have to stay at 135 unless, unless, you know, um, they give us something to want to fight for, you know? So it all depends. It all depends, but I'd rather him go to 140. He's been suffering at this weight for like seven years already. Thank you, Kevin. And now we go to our first zoom question of the evening. Uh, Michael Woods, please go ahead. Hey, junior. 
Teofimo Sr., full credit to you. Uh, I don't know exactly the history of Nostradamus, but I'm guessing that Nostradamus got a lot of shit when he was saying his stuff and people didn't believe him. So full credit to you. You guys talked a lot of stuff for a lot of years, but you backed every bit of it up. So props to you, man. You're a little bit, you know, Brooklyn style and it rubs people a certain way, but props to you. Uh, I got to ask you, uh, do you think Lomachenko deserves a rematch? If he says, hey, I, I want to do this again, w- would you say, yeah, let's give that guy the opportunity to try again? I mean, if the fight would have been closed, it maybe, you know. Um, I wore my lucky hat today. I was going to put a... Um, the the only Ramirez hat of uh, the my son's um friend that had passed away, but I told my son, you know what, I put the shirt on and 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 I wanna I wanna go in there with my Nostradamus hat, you know I I felt like I think I made the right decision of wearing this hat, <laughs> you know because we've been winning a lot of fights like this, you know um I was not nervous at all, I was anxious, I was very anxious uh, the whole day today, you know I just wanted it to be over with, you know I just wanted to shut everybody up. You know, uh, and and I knew it, you know, my son has always been with me. I know what he could do. I know what he cannot do, you know. So from now on, I just don't want nobody to doubt him no more. You know, uh, he has suffered so much. Like, he never gets what he, what he deserves. Let's see what happens now. Thank you for that doctoral dissertation, Michael. Uh, next, we go to Sean Sattel. Hey, it's your female. Uh, congrats for your son, man. Great performance. Um, did anything... Surprise you about this fight? I mean, you've called it for a few years now. Anything surprise you tonight? Of course, of course not. I know what I got. You know, um, I didn't start it when I said we we're going to beat this guy up. You know, um, the only thing that I was surprised was he took those shots really good, you know, and I got to give it up to Lobacheco. He's a strong fighter. That's why he's got two gold medals, 400 fights. You know, the guy has been there with everybody's, you know, everybody's style. But, um, he never fought a guy like my son out of those 400 and something fights that he had. My son, you know, had the kryptonite for him, you know, and tonight we showed it. Thank you very much. And next we go to Mike Coppinger from The Athletic. Congratulations. You know, it's funny, right? Everyone knows you as a guy who's really excitable and, you know, I've never seen you this composed. Are you finding clarity? Listen, I already got, when I got Lomacheco, I don't need to do all that no stuff, <laughs> that nonsense, you know? I wanted him. Once I got him, that's it, it's over. You know, I wanted him in the ring. I wanted the opportunity, and God gave it to me. I knew that, that's why I knew we was going to be successful, because what we went through to get this fight is, is almost impossible. You know, it's, it's been well documented how much you've gone through, how much you've sacrificed, all the turmoil. Is, is, is it all worth it now, everything you've sacrificed to be here at this moment, undisputed lightweight champion? Man, I'll do it again, you know. I have no um, no regrets. I'm happy to get my son to where we wanted to go. And this is just the beginning, you know. I know my son. He's not content yet, you know. He wants to do better, bigger things, you know. Um, he wants to be pound for pound the best fighter in the world. And, um, and he's going to be pound for pound real soon. You know, and you mentioned 140 pounds. There's a lot of guys at 135 that are close to moving up as well. Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney, uh, even Javante Davis you know, could be a 140 in, in the future, I suppose. What do you think is going to be the mega fight for Tifimo Lopez in the future? All of them. All of them. But these guys, they got to they gotta, they gotta do their thing. You know what I'm saying? We, we've been doing our thing. We don't go backwards. You know, I told my son, we're not in the sport to go backwards. So these kids, they got to they, they gotta do their thing. So they could come up to us and step, you know, step up to the plate. I don't want none of them losing because those are mega fights. Hey, but look, you're wearing the hat, Nostradam- Nostradamus. Pick one fight. What is the mega fight in the sport? Teofimo Lopez versus who in a couple of years or next year? I don't know. Devin Haney. Let's say Devin Haney. Thank you, Mike. And uh, we go back to our Zoom calls. Uh, Marcos Villegas from Fight Hub TV. Marcos, please go ahead. Uh, thanks, Evan. Uh, congratulations, senior. Um, you know, I think all of us that have interacted with you remember you telling us that your son would beat Lomachenko two or three years ago uh, whenever we, we would see you at the fights. Um, curious, in, in terms of the game plan, um, what previous fights did you see vulnerabilities 
uh, in uh, Vasily Lomachenko with what you were explaining uh, with? Well, I saw all the fights with Pedraza, Linares, you know, and I saw something with Lomachenko every time he stepped in to the sides. He couldn't do that with my son because my son had him like double stepping back and he couldn't go to that side the whole night. We took that away from him. From the moment that I knew he couldn't do that, I knew that we had him, you know. Um, you know, we just stopped, do we stopped him from doing everything that he's comfortable in there with, you know. Uh, he's used to fighting fighters that have their hands up, you know, so it's easier for him to get inside the pocket and, and do his work. So I was watching a lot of videos every time he would jump in. I told my son, you got to hurt him to the body. You got to hurt him to the body. And 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 we stood, uh, we stood chasing that, chasing the body, chasing the body the whole night, you know. And I think that that hurt, you know, he was hurt a lot of times. A lot of times he was ready to go. You know, uh, I think my son could have finished him. He decided not to, but I like it because, you know, he gave, he gave him a whooping. And that's what, that's what we said that we was gonna do. Thank you, Marcos. Uh, just a reminder, anybody wants to ask a question in the Zoom, uh, please use the raise hand mechanism on the Zoom chat. And I will get to as many people as possible. Teo People Jr. should be joining us soon. But while we wait, we have a couple more questions for the trainer, the father. Hold on one second. I told you a long time ago. My son was the best in the world. I remember. Next, we go to Miguel Maravilla. Miguel, please go ahead. Hey, first of all, senior, uh, congratulations, man. Was there Thank any you. concern going in late to the fight? Was there any concern as far as before the scorecards were read, you know, being that Vegas is Vegas? Yeah, man, but it was a shout out. You know, it was like it was it was like there was no way we could have got robbed with this fight. You know, even though they had it 116, 112, some one of the cards, I thought that was ridiculous. You know, um, I think the, the right score was 119, 110. I could give him that, you know. I think that that judge was watching the fight that, you know, that he was, you know, the fight that we had today. I think that he had the best score, you know, but no, not at all. Not at all. I wasn't. Okay. Next we go back to the press assembled here in the press room, Sam Gordon review journal, Sam, please go ahead when ready. As clinical of a performance as you guys put forth tonight, uh, was there anything that, you know, moving forward, you think he can build upon or do better anything that you thought that, um, I guess any mistakes that you felt that were made that you guys can improve on going forward? Oh, a lot, a lot. Um, we got to improve way more. You know, there's a lot of things that he didn't listen to me in there. Um, a lot of stuff that I want him to do more that's going to make his fights easier. And we're going to work on it, you know. Um, next camp, you know, I'm just going to, I have to make him do the things that I tell him to do, you know, because there was times in there that he had them. And um, I would tell him to shift, you know, that's something that we do to finish the fighter. And he had so many opportunities to do it, but he decided not to. Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm happy because he gave this guy a beating, you know, he's going to feel it tomorrow. So the score that you thought was the closest, did you, you mean 119, 109, because it was a oh, one? One oh nine, yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. one nineteen, one oh nine, but it yeah. was a woman. You said yeah, I just wanted to make sure Julie yeah, Letterman was she's the, the one that got it right. You know, I thought that we were so much ahead in the fight. I mean, uh going into the eighth round, I told him, Yo, you won every round. This guy could only stop you by knocking you out. So just be careful, stay composed, you know. He's gonna try to take you to deep waters, you know. So just be careful, you know, and, and watch your head because he's trying to hit you with his uh, with his head, you know, he's trying to uh, up, you know, a headbutt you. So just be careful, you know. And and I told him, you know, you're gonna get cut. This guy's gonna cut you, you know. Just take him out, man. Take him out. Don't 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 let him do that to you. And it happened, you know. But it's okay, you know. I'm happy. Um, it's the best way could we could have won. It would. It's better than knocking this guy out because now the world knows that this kid's the best boxer out there and puncher. And uh, next we go back to Zoom. Uh, with Steve Kim. Steve, I know you have something to say to Senior. Steve, please go ahead. <laughs> Tio, what's going on? I told you, baby, the takeover. Yeah, I have a question. Two questions. Um, number one, how much vindication do you feel over this victory? Man, I'm 100%, man, of uh, vindication. I mean, I started this with my son, with nobody around me. 
He was a little kid. He was only four years old when I started this mission. You know, it took us a long time, 18 years, man, but we're here. I'm so, I'm so happy. I don't know. I have no words to explain, man. I, I you know, I, I was walking around and I was like trying to pinch myself, make, make believe like in my dreamy man, don't wake up. You know, I was so excited, but, um, yeah, man, I, I feel, I, I feel really happy for accomplishing this, but this is only the beginning. And Tio, my other question is this. I know the last couple of camps, you guys have gone away to Flemington, New Jersey. And I know your son has said it's more structured and you guys have your own private camp. It's not like when I visited you guys last summer, which is a little bit crazy. In your view, how much of a difference has that made going to camp where he wants to be and you're both comfortable? Oh, man, it's, uh, Flemington is, is beautiful. All dog boxing, you know, it's, it's, it's just it's an amazing gym, um, amazing people. You know, um, you know, uh, Bill, everybody there, the whole staff, you know, Heidi, his wife, everybody took, you know, was taking care of us, uh, making sure that everything was there, equipment, um, everything clean, sanitized. So we had a great camp and, um, you know, we might do it again over there. You know, you never know. All right, Tio, thanks. By the way, I think you're going to sleep with that WBC belt on tonight. That's the feeling that I'm getting. Yo, Good night, by guys. Time, man. By <laughs> time, man. How how long did I wait for this? You know, uh, everybody about Papachenko, Papachenko here, Papachenko there. You know, I told everybody all that stuff that they do, man, is just to hype everybody up. You know, I already knew it. So, you know, as long as I know it, I don't care who says what. You know, but now, you know, I just want Papachenko to go back to um, Ukraine and and give his son a couple more dance lessons. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, we got a couple more for Senior. And we move to Cameron Wolf from ESPN.com. Cameron, please go ahead. Hey, what's up, man? I had a question. I mean, uh, there was a lot said in the uh, Blood and Sweat series about your relationship with Tio. You know, he got emotional at one point. I wanted to get your view on maybe that and what your relationship with him is and maybe how this win could help that. Well, listen, man, if it would have been the other way around, if it would have been Lomacheco and his father, nobody would have said nothing. I mean, it, not, everybody's not going to be in love with each other, you know, every day. You know, people have problems, you know, and me and my son fix these problems. You know, I'm over here with him and his wife. Everybody's getting along. Um, you know, I got to do it for him because this is all about him. It's not about nobody else. So, you know, I got to man up and, and, and I got to take my responsibilities to love what he loves, you know, and, and make him be happy you know um he deserves it you know um he went through a lot to get here with me you know and that's the only way to do it you got to stay focused and uh he did that today and of course not man me and my son love each other that's my baby thank you cameron and uh we go to adriana jimenez adriana please go ahead Hola, Teófimo, te puedo preguntar en español. Eh, después sí, claro. de, de varios años, hay un campeón centroamericano, tu hijo, poniendo en, en alto el, el nombre del boxeo latinoamericano, centroamericano. ¿Cómo te sientes acerca de eso? Y sobre todo sobre esa historia de vida que tienen ustedes después de que tú llegaste a Estados Unidos. Bueno, bien orgulloso porque él fue el primer campeón mundial de Honduras al, al ganar la IBF. Y yo sabía que nos faltaba más cosas que hacer y por eso vinimos a buscar todos los cinturones con el mejor boxeador del mundo y le enseñamos a la gente que, que mi hijo es el mejor. Siempre me, gusta, siempre me gusta la competición, siempre me gusta pelear con los mejores. Me gusta que mi hijo pelee con los mejores siempre. Y por eso es que nosotros estamos haciendo cosas grandes para toda Latinoamérica, especialmente para Honduras. Y... Claro que sí, vienen cosas bien grandes, eh, vienen muchas esperanzas. ¿Cuántos muchachos ahora mismo en Honduras quisieran ser como mi hijo? Eh, estamos abriendo las puertas para muchas, muchas personas. Eh, y y vamos, a, vamos a trabajar en eso, vamos a trabajar en abrir eh, escuelas, abrir escuelas de boxeo en Honduras, ayudar a la juventud que está perdida allá. Eh, yo estoy más que seguro que debe existir otro Teófimo López en Honduras. Sorry, that was Andrea Yanez, and next is Adriana Jimenez. Adriana, go ahead. Thank you. Um, 
Senior, for, first of all, congratulations on making history tonight. You know, tonight we saw a different side of your son, um, a side that we're not used to seeing that often. Can you talk a little bit about that? And, and you know, what does that say about him to be able to keep that mental focus from the beginning to the end? Well, he's been saying this for the longest. He's been saying I was a boxer before I was even a puncher. So, you know, um, I told him, you know, the most beautiful thing will be if you box the shit out of this guy, you know, sorry for my my language, but uh, I told him, you know, it would be amazing if you don't knock him out and you just box him and beat him in every round, it, it will be amazing. I mean, I could not believe the punches this guy was taking. I mean, it's just, I hope he's okay, you know, tomorrow um, because uh, those were devastating punches. Anybody else would have been down on the floor. Uh, thank you, Adriana. I've just been told that. Uh, thank you, guys. I've just been told that Tafi uh, Lopez is about a minute or two away. Um, and oh, Kevin, clarify something you said, Tafi. You you were talking about the headbutts. Do you, do you think he was using that as a tactic, or do you think it was because of the difference in height of the fighters? Of course not. He does that, and that's why we told the officials before the fight to watch to watch him. Because I, I peeped that in the in the in the in the Linares fights and almost all the fights, and he usually does that when he's a little bit frustrated, you know. And um, he was he was he was gunning for it. He was gunning for it. He wanted to shirt, he wanted to cut him. He wanted to shirt. You know, he wanted to make him uncomfortable in there, but it didn't work. My son is my son always stays composed, so I knew that wasn't working. I didn't even get nervous, you know. But there was some some times there that he would walk in and 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 start throwing his little pat patty cake punches. And it got me a little bit worried with my son, you know, because I, I didn't know whether he was going to be able to absorb all those headbutts, you know, and um, and that's why I wanted him to take him out in the earlier rounds, because I told him, listen, this guy's going to cut you. I don't want him to cut you. I don't want him to hurt you with the bed, but with the headbutts. And um, we just, you know, he stood composed, man, the whole fight. And uh, we are we are class this guy, you know, that's why I don't want no rematch. There's no there's no rematch clause. You know, for the same reason, everybody thought he was going to win. Thank you, Kevin. Um, I just been told Tape was about a minute away. You know, for being here for me and and my son. You know, especially my son. Um, and there's bigger things to to come. You know, and um, I really like the support. Thank you for everything, guys.